Okay, I'm create a new project. I'm going to make it 2D and click create project. I'll make sure it's pointing to your um, uh, desktop. Yeah, it's pointing to my pointing to the documents. Okay. And um, once you get there, then go ahead and import a couple images. So I'm going to import a new asset and bring in a couple images. And I'm going to go ahead and drop them on here. I'll resize uh, this one. Now I want to create some code so the uh, Pink Panther will move around. So I'm going to um, choose a Pink Panther. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So I'll eventually get it. I'll like download a bunch of images and <laughs> put them on every every computer. So you get a different laptop, then you'll all have the same images. Not that you need all this, need the same. Either. Okay, so go ahead and drop them on uh, uh, after you import the assets and go ahead and drop them on there. Now we're going to cause the Pink Panther to move, um, so I want to put some code behind. Um, so click the Pink Panther or whatever image you have and click your add component. And um, I'm going to get rid of that and go down to new, new script. And um, I'll just call this player movement. And click create and add. And I put my little cheat sheet so I can remember the exact syntax for it. And so I'll double click the player movement, uh, C sharp file. Okay. Uh, now remember, we want to record off our position, so we'll have vector two um, position, and I'll say position is equal to this dot transform dot position. Really. Probably not so weird. I um, I got this working on all the laptops last weekend, so that if um, 
before I was just working on four. <laughs> so if one went down, this like student was out of luck. I must not have got the, the net private network set there. Okay. So then um, I'm going to check uh, if, a, if key's been pushed. So if, and uh, let's see, input dot get key down. Key code dot right arrow. And you can put the curly curly brackets, but it isn't strictly necessary if all you're going to do is just make one change. So do that right there. And then I'll say if input dot key down. I could do an else on that, but um, I don't think it'll affect it performance wise. Left arrow. Position X is equal to position dot X minus 0 0.2 F. If we were writing a, a longer program than just a simple tutorial like this, um, you'd want to do an else if on that because then after it meets one of the criteria, it drops down to the end of the if statement. And it wouldn't keep checking each one of these. Okay, key code dot up arrow. And position dot y is equal to position dot y plus 0 0.2 f. And if input dot get key down, key code dot down arrow, then position dot y is equal to position dot y minus 0 0.2 f. And at this point, I'll set back my um, transform position. This dot transform dot position is going to equal to um, our position. And again, you could use your standard uh, letters or standard keys for a video game if you wanted. We're actually going to see how you can drop on a controller that controls some of this for you. So you don't have to sit there and and redo it each time. Everybody good? Not yet? Got it? Okay. Now let's just attach to Unity. We're going to check it. I'm going to go back to Unity. And I suppose run the game would be appropriate instead of just doing my arrow keys. <laughs> Good thing the weekend's about here. <laughs> okay, so now if you, you do your arrow keys, um, you see it move over like that. Nothing exciting. Um, I'm going to stop it with a little um, red uh, square here. I'm going to close that debug output window down there. Uh, which which uh, which one was it that um, checks to see and you can hold it down and moves? Input dot. Uh, Get key. 
returns true and who's returns okay so this changes the get keys see how that affects it just because it's painful to sit there and um watch that move over slowly Go ahead and save it and attach to Unity. And let's see if that'll move fast now. Okay, that's much better. Everything's moving as it should. We got their code working there. Okay. Now we're going to, um, just so we don't have to type that again today, we'll come over to Visual Studio, we'll stop that, close the output window, uh, highlight this code, copy it, and then go into Notepad and paste it. Because we're going we're gonna to create a new project here in a few minutes, and um, we don't want to retype all that again. Okay, so if I go back to Unity, if I click the Pink Panther, if I click the Add component down here, there's, uh, oops, wrong one. I meant to go in Physics 2D. There's some different op options here in the Physics 2D. You see there's a Rigid Body 2D. If I choose a Rigid Body, Comes up with some information here, adds it to the Pink Panther. Oh, um, uh, let me see, let me remove this. I click the Add Component, and then I went to the Physics 2D. And if you scroll down, you'll see Rigid Body 2D. Let's run our game and see what happens. Pink Panther just drops off, right? Remember, remember Blender, how we did a rigid body and it just fell? So to get uh, Pink Panther not to fall, or whatever, whatever character you have, put a zero for gravity. And now if you run it, it shouldn't drop off the screen. Now, um, if I click Add Component, uh, and I'm still on the Pink Panther, and I click uh, Physics 2D. You'll see a lot of other um, other items here: box collider, capsule collider, circle collider, composite collider, edge collider, um, so forth. Uh, choose circle collider. 2D. Now you'll notice that there's a green um, green circle around the Pink Panther now. Uh, this is your radius of um, collision. So if you're moving your character forward towards something, this is what would cause it to uh, be impacted. If you're playing a video game and you're shooting at somebody, if uh, the bullet would touch any place within that circle, uh, then um, then your player would be collided, and you'd program it accordingly. And I see over here, um, if I scroll down, uh, you got circle collider. You can change your um, offset for where your center of your circle is. You can also change the radius. Like maybe that's too big. It, ge it guessed based upon the size of my image. Remember how I said you don't want too much white space around it? Because then it'll guess real big. Um, so you want it as close to down. Not that it matters. You can adjust it here. But if I change that to 1.3, you see that it changes my circle down. Problem with this is now is that, um, you know, if it touches the feet, uh, it's not a collision. Okay. I'm going to change that to a little bit more than that. i change it to 1.5. Yeah, it's probably close enough. 
So now we'll go over to the, the Bugs Bunny or whatever character you have. We'll click Add Component. And we want to, um, again, go to Physics 2D. And we want to choose the Circle, circle Collider. It's probably too big, radius-wise. Let me change that to 3.2. Maybe four. It's probably good enough to demonstrate it. Now, if I run this and try to move my Pink Panther over, it won't go past Bugs Bunny, will it? It's colliding and won't let us do anything, anything like that. You get the collision to work. Now that wouldn't be very exciting is that if that's the only thing we could do. Um, but you can actually check for a collision, and we'll we'll get to that point uh, eventually. That's where we get to the uh, applying the collision to the asteroids. Because we're going to be firing a bullet from our ship, and if that bullet touches a rock, we want the rock to be destroyed. You're pretty good on the, that first part. Okay. Um, we're going to um, take a look at, um, see if I can find images. We're going to take a look, at, and I'll, I'll go ahead and save this and close it. Uh, let's see, save project, do a file new. Let's try it again. I found a new project. I'll call this Pac Man. And then do 2D. And then click um, create project. Let's see, Visual Studio still has that code file open. I'm going to go exit out of Visual Studio just to make sure we start fresh. I guess that's why all that's loading. I'm going to go to see what I can get for Pac-Man. So I type Pac-Man images, and I want to steal a playing field. Um, probably there is no blank playing field. This might be the cleanest. You found a blank one? Really? Where's that at? You say you went to the next? Or Internet Explorer? Oh. oh, well, yours will be better than mine then. <laughs> Assuming this is a large enough image. Eh, that's probably good enough. For what I'm trying to demonstrate. Okay, so I'm going to right click that. Okay, go away, go away. Uh, save image or copy image. I'm going to paint.net. Do an edit, paste into new image. Jeez, that's too small. So you want an Internet Explorer. Let me go on Internet Explorer. You just went to Google, I'm assuming, or Bing. Google, okay. Would you type in Pac-Man? Okay. Pac-Ma. pac 
man. Then went to images. Do you have to go very far to find it? Okay. Here's one with the dots already there. Okay, perfect. Right click, um, copy. You can go here and do an edit paste in the new image. You could resize that if you want, but you can resize it over in Unity. Um, so I guess I'll leave it alone. And I'll do a file, save as. And I'll save it in my pictures. And I'll call it Pack Background. And click OK. <laughs> they actually have it water what are game elements. So I guess somebody's using that for their own. Okay, so I'm come over to my assets. I'm going to import new asset. And uh, pack background. Bring that in. Drop it up here. Resize that a little bit. Ever get their pack background in? Now this right here, um, if I click an add component, go to Physics 2D. Sur the circle um, collider probably wouldn't work very well on this, but there's one called a box collider. So if you choose a box collider 2D. By the way, if you can't can't ever find these, you just come up here and start typing it. Like if you start typing Collider, assuming you remember that part of it, then it'll bring up everything with Collider. Um, so we want Box Collider 2D. And... Um, Not sure if I see it very well, but if I go to wireframe, I do the drop down right here, and I go to wireframe. So I'm not sure if I see it real well. But if I come here to size and change this to 10, there it is, it's that green. So it set the entire image, didn't it? Okay, now I see it. <laughs> Um, so I can uh, change that to um, 7, 5, uh, 5.2, 5 5.3, 5.3, and change this to um, 2, 1, 0.5, Point 0.1, maybe point 0.1. If I now go back to my um, to my shaded, I can probably see it a little bit better now. And um, you see this right here. We want this to be along one of our walls. It looks like I made it too long, didn't I? Um, not that it matters, but let me let me just uh, fix that. How about five? No, four point eight. No, four point three. Four five. Four point five looks perfect. Now the offset. Uh, going up is your Y. So if I change that to negative two, negative. What did I put? Point oh two. 
Okay, two. Two would be up there. 2.1, 2 2.2, 2.3, 2.31, 2. Perfect. You see how that's now lining up in that wall right there? The top. Yeah, see how that green is along that border there? Mm -hmm. And I can refine it even a little bit more. Than, now, in case you're wondering what I did, if you hold down your shift key um, in, your, in your mouse wheel, you can move it around like that. If you simply move your mouse wheel, it zooms in and out. And again, holding down your shift key in your mouse wheel, you can then move your mouse and, and reposition it. Really? You don't have that much yeah, black area? Maybe I resized it differently or something. Yeah, but it's still rounded though. Yeah. Now, you probably want it a little bit better, maybe. So maybe um, instead of that, we want um, 2.325. Uh, that looks even better. I mean, you can change it later on. Now, the idea is if you go through and you create these um, boxes around each one of your walls, then if you throw the Pac-Man character on there with a the movement, you can have your Pac-Man move around, and he can't go outside the walls. He can't go through the little um, boundaries in there. Now, I know that seems tedious, because how much would you have to create? Quite a few, right? Um, there is some simplifying it. Like this wall right here, this top wall, is the same as the bottom wall, isn't it? So I can duplicate this. If you come over to this box collider, if you do the drop down here, you see there's a copy component. So you choose copy component. Now if you choose the drop down again, you can see paste component is new. And it'll drop a new box collider. You probably want to collapse your first one collapse some of these other ones maybe also so our new box collider uh, we want it down at the bottom so instead of um, y being 2.325 maybe I want it as negative not that I centered it if you center it right then it helps you in that regards but I put negative um, uh, I'm not sure if I even see it. Let me go back to wireframe. Oops. So go back to wireframe. I'm not sure if I see that. There it is. I had to come over here and uh, collapse this, and then, okay, now I see them. So that's where it's at. So now let me go back to um, shaded. Now I see it real clear. Now um, that isn't quite enough, so I want to go down to negative 2.4 maybe. Negative 2.5. Uh, negative two point. Yeah, that's too far. Maybe five nine. Yeah, that's probably close enough. It'll bleed over a little bit. About eight five. Eight three. Eight three is perfect. I think. Now, um, you might say, well, yeah, but it's going down too far. doesn't matter, right? If Pac-Man's stuck in the middle, he's not going to be able to get to that other side anyway. So you could have that go down as far as you want. Um, your character's never going to go outside that wall. Is it inside the, like the blue line, the inside one? Um, I have it, uh, the top of the rectangle lined up uh, with the exact edge of the, the okay. top of the blue there. Now again, uh, if you go to wireframe, 
you can see those um, where the boxes are. Sometimes when you first drop them, um, it's not so easy to see where they're at. I guess we ought to have a Pac-Man to throw on there just so we start testing it. Um, so let me go over and grab a, a Pac-Man um, character. Huh. I like that one. It's probably too big, but uh, I can resize it. I'll choose this one. Uh, it's helpful. Um, I mean, you can go, you can go and take it into, um, paint. paint. I can think of, and, um, get rid of it. Now this image is, is still too big, but that's okay. Um, oops. That's okay because what kind of collider would I put on this? Circle. Circle. Yeah, so it doesn't matter that the image is too big, really. Um, we're just going to resize it down anyway. But it'll think the center is exactly in the center of that object. So that creates a headache. But the, you can change it. So I must just save image as. And um, let's see, go to pictures. And. Uh, SVG document in the world is that okay I'm gonna right click on it and copy image I'm going to paint.net and I'll uh, edit paste in a new image and while I'm here I'm gonna go ahead and make it square as much as I can less adjusting edit copy edit paste and a new image uh, i think it's a really huge image so i'm going to do a image resize and i'll make it uh 200 by 200 more or less okay problem is you take a huge image into another package like that you can resize it but uh, the original uh, file is still huge. So it's best not to have it too too large. That's even probably too large for our game. But um, uh, 200 in the width. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. Save as now or save, I guess. And uh, now I can do a PNG. I'll call it Pacman.png. And click OK. I go over to Unity here. I'm going to add in the asset. So I'm going to import new asset. And uh, bring in my Pac-Man. Drop it on here. Um, I see layer-wise, if I come over here to trans what is it, transform, no, sprite render, I see it's uh, behind it. So I'm going to do a 1 for order and layer. And Pac-Man is way too big. So I'm going to resize Pac-Man. Hmm. That's probably good enough. Now, we do have to put a rigid body on Pac-Man, just like we did before, and we also have to put a collider on it. Um, the, you have to have a rigid body on one item. You don't have to have it on every item, but you have to have it on one item, and you uh, have to have a collider on everything you want to handle collision. Um, so I'm going to come over here. i got Pac-Man selected. I'm going to choose the Add Component. Um, I, I got the collider here, so let me back that off and go to Physics 2D. Choose my rigid body, 2D. Remember, we want gravity to be zero. Gravity is more of like you, you're programming a side, you know, where, uh, where it scrolls side side to side. 
that kind of platform game. Um, then I want to do the add component, and I want to drop on my um, oh cir circle collider. You want to always want to make sure you choose a 2D. There's also a, th a 3D version of circle collider, or I'm not sure about circle, but some of them have 3D versions. Okay. Now I've already added um, uh, uh, the other, you know, the um, colliders on those two walls. So now I'll put my code so Pac-Man will move. So um, I still got Pac-Man selected. I'm going to clap some of these. And I'm going to click Add Component. And I'll choose New Script. And I'll say Player Movement. Create an ad. And I'll double click player movement here. It'll bring up Visual Studio. And this is where we want to go to Notepad and we want to edit copy our code we just had. We don't want to retype that in each time. Some editors allow you to do shortcuts. Like when I worked at IFR and did programming, um, I programmed certain shortcuts. Like if you did a Control W or Control I in the program, it would automatically put that template in place. Not all packages uh, allow that, but that one did. Okay, so I'm going to copy that. Paste it in here in the update. And now if I do attach to Unity. And go back to Unity. And click Run. Now if we do our arrow keys, ah, it's going right through it. Oh, it straight down. Oh, it needs to set gravity to zero. Yeah, I did. Unless it saved. Let's see. Oh, I didn't put my collider on. I don't think I put it on there. Yeah, gravity scales at zero. Okay, so was it a zero? It went yeah, straight it down? Yeah, it's at zero right now. It went straight down and then like it got stopped by the. So yours actually stopped yours? Yeah, it stopped at like the bottom. Oh. Yours didn't? Mm -hmm. That's bizarre. What would make it drop straight down? Oh, if it increases it by too much, maybe it jumps on the other side of it. I wonder if that's a possibility. If I come over to um, Visual Studio, maybe that's too big of a jump. If I stop the stop at... One, 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 one. Attach to Unity. Just as soon as I figure out why mine's not working, I'll look at yours. <laughs> there. That's better. When I had it by 0.2, what it would do is it'd be on this side, and when I moved it by 0.2, it missed that wall altogether. Does that make sense? Now let me look at yours. It went straight down, but like I can move it. You can move it? Does yeah. it still try to go straight down? Yeah, it's still straight down. That is strange. Um, Wouldn't stop again. Started. Okay, so at this point, the automatically moved without you touching anything. Yeah. Okay, so stop that. 
Nibs. Rigid body 2D. That is just too bizarre. Got the other codes up too. Oh, I wonder. Me over at Visual Studio? Yeah. Yes, I can cut that one. But the one that is getting confused. Yeah, it's out of this one too. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so then we put that. Something wrong with the, uh, the Pac Man background? No. Maybe I did something. You might see that if, uh, if your box was in the middle of nowhere. Oh, that's why. See how your, your collision box yeah. is all the way around? We want it just along the wall at the top. Uh, so like um, uh, this box collider here. Um, good way to actually change that. I think that's, I think that's the scenario image. Yeah. Um, 4.5, that's fine there. Wide though, we probably want more like 0 0.2. Let's see how it's smaller now. Uh, that's. And then Y, I'll change that to 2.31, 2.41, 2. I'll go from wireframe to solid shading. Um, then I want to keep adjusting that. 2.43, 4, 5, 6, 8. That's not bad. 9. That's not perfect. Well, I'd like to see. So then, if we run it, you're up. So that's the best. But that's what it was. Okay. I thought it was around the whole thing. If it does, it considers the whole thing as a collision. Yeah. So Pac Man collides with it right to begin with and it throws Pac Man off to the side. Mm -hmm. Well, now to, you know, to, um, let me see if I zoom in. Oh, stop my game. Zoom in. Now I can put other, other walls in there. Um, I want to put a wall along here. On this side right here. So I'm going to um, choose my Pac-Man background. Make sure you're on the right uh, image. And I want to add another uh, box collider. 
Uh, let's see, Physics 2D Box Collider. And now, um, do you see where the box box is currently? Yeah, around the entire thing. So I want to adjust that. My, um, I'll work the X offset here in a minute, but the X I want maybe to be 0 0.2. Um, that's probably good enough. If you um, do them all the same, uh, I just can't remember what I made the other one in terms of the width. And then uh, Y, change it to 3 maybe for now. The X needs to go back, so I do negative 2, negative 2.3, negative 2.28, negative 2.78. Again, zooming in really does help on that. Um, 7, 2, uh, 70, 68, 68 looks perfect on mine, as well as my eyes can see. But it's too low, so I want to move that up. So the Y has to go like 1. Now, you might say, well, it's gone up too high. If you're really OCD, you could bring it back down a little bit. But is Pac-Man ever going to be up there in the far left corner outside the walls anyway? No, so you wouldn't need to worry about that. But it does go down too far because Pac-Man is supposed to be able to go through this um, this opening here. Um, so I would need to change the, uh, what do I need to change? The Y, I guess. Two. Two would work, but now it's too low. So 1.3. Okay, that's not too bad, but Y needs to be a little bit bigger. 2.5. 1 1.5, 1.55, 1.56, I'm going up instead of down, 1.45, yeah, that's not bad. So you see this here now, um, Pac-Man won't be able to go through this wall. Negative 2.258 and 1.45 for the offset. And the uh, X is 0 0.2 and 2.5. Yeah. Now, if I um, if I do a box around this inner one here just to show it, so I'm going to drop on another box collider. I'll, I'll um, collapse that one. Um, you can actually type box collider here like that. And so whenever you go to add a new one, you don't have to search for it anymore. It's right here. Uh, make sure you choose the 2D, though. And expand that. Uh, this is probably going to be uh, X of um, negative 2. Not even close. Negative 1. Actually, let me change my, my width first. Size of it, let's say it's 1 by 1. It's clear over here. Uh, negative 2, negative 1.5, trying to get it approximately in the same right place. 1, 2, 1 1.8. Okay. Now the, um, the X offset, instead of 1, I want... Um, Negative 1.1, 1. 1, 2, 3, 3, 2. Okay, that's not too bad in terms of that position. The Y is too high, isn't it? Um, 1.2. Five. Okay, that's not too bad. X. Hopefully, it keeps the left uh, corner, but we'll see. Um, Zero point five. Okay, didn't. Um, 
negative 1.76 Five, eight width is still off zero point four eight seven that's probably close enough okay now my y is wrong size wise we want that probably zero point four three changes to one point seven five 1.82, and x should be a little bit more over, so maybe a 9. Okay, finally. <laughs> I suppose you get good at those, you could do it very quickly, but I'm not, obviously not that great at it. Oops, control Z. Now run that. Okay, so Pac Man goes up here and goes to the left. Now he bounces a little bit too much, doesn't he? That means that my movement's too too great. But you see he can't go through that um that that block right there. So if I come back to my um, C sharp code, stop that, and maybe instead of 0 0.1, 0 0.05, 0 0.05, click attach to Unity, and try to run it again. Well, where's Unity? There we go. That's not bad. Still got a little bit of a give. Now, by the way, you can um, you can programmatically check that. We're not going to worry about it. But you can programmatically check it to see if it's going to collide. And if it collides, don't do the movement. Uh, but we haven't talked about uh, how to program collisions yet. This is all done via the um, program where it handles collisions. But you can programmatically do different things with it. Everybody get their Pac-Man to work with the walls somewhat? Okay. Now, remember how we um, we programmed, you know, like I can't go to the left here. Shouldn't even be going in there, but um, we programmed where you could, you see an issue here? See how I'm doing my arrow keys and it's not even going in there? So it could be that I need to back this off some, some more. Now you back it off too much, it'll just go so slow it won't even be. <laughs> be decent change it to 0.01 I'm going to run that <clears throat> <laughs> Way too slow. Do you see much of, as much of it bouncing off the wall, though? No. We would need to change that. But now I bet if I could go down here, I can probably get it to line up perfectly here. You could programmically check this, such that uh, when it reaches uh, within a certain there, you snap to a certain grid to where you could then have it go uh, straight through. You ever play those video games where you, you're pretty sure you turned the corner, but it just wouldn't let you go because you didn't go quite far enough? How annoying was that? 
yeah, <laughs> somebody's chasing you right then, and just you miss it just by a little bit of a sliver. So some games you could program it to snap to. If you're within 95% of that door frame, it'll scoot you over to where you could immediately go up. So it makes the gameplay um, smoother. Now the um, go ahead and um, we'll go ahead and uh, close out of this. So go ahead and say, do save whatever you need to save and exit out of um, exit out both Unity and um, Visual Studio. If you go, and I didn't even pay attention where mine are stored at, assume documents. Uh, what does it say? 9.6? I got Pac-Man here. If you go to where it's stored at, how you can copy it to your flash drive is you, um, you right-click on the folder, do an edit copy, go over to your flash drive and do an edit paste. That'll copy every file. You don't want to go inside the folder. Um, but that'll copy every file. So then next time when you have a different computer, you'll have access to all your, your files again. Um, to zip it up, to upload, you would right-click on the same folder, and you'd say send to compressed folder. And that's how you turn in your code. Everybody locate their folder and so forth? Yeah, it's copying 1,000. Yeah, it's a lot. That's why you wouldn't want to copy them one at a time or upload them one at a time. Now, after that gets done, copying it to your flash drive, uh, what I want you to do the rest of the day is to add more walls. I assume you probably won't be able to write, add every wall on that. But then whatever you finish wall-wise, just go ahead and zip that up, and I'll put a Dropbox out there. So just get us used to working with colliders. And then next time, we're going to uh, go back into um, uh, our asteroid game. And we're going to add colliders onto the the asteroids and ship, and and then we'll put a bullet in there, and then we'll pull a we'll put a collider on a bullet. Um, it's the same way. And then when your bullet collides with a asteroid, we'll have it disappear. Or asteroid meteor, isn't it? <laughs> what's what's the game called? I don't know. You keep talking about it. Asteroids, right? Sure. Yeah. Okay. We'll go with that. <laughs>